The Panopticon is a famous building that was um, uh, appeared in the late 18th century and it was um, it's widely understood by historians as a prison design. So in the past, um, prior to this period, the way that you punish prisoners, the way that you punish people for crimes was uh, to, um, through corporal punishment, you hurt them and uh, they won't do it again. In the late 18th century, there's a movement to change that, to put people in prison instead. And uh, the Panopticon was a design for a, a building in which people would behave themselves. It consists of a circular building with cells all the way around the perimeter and a lodge in the centre for the inspector or the person who is in charge of the Panopticon, in charge of the building. You put prisoners in the cells all around and they can see the lodge that the um, inspector is located in. However, they don't know whether the inspector is in the lodge or not. The inspector can always see them, so if they misbehave themselves, then the inspector can tell and come and get them. But they don't know whether the inspector is there or not. And so the theory is that they'll always behave themselves because they, it might be the case that the inspector is there, even though they don't know it. And there's a famous um, example of this, this um, design being used as a metaphor for modern society by the French philosopher Michel Foucault. And Foucault is actually just one of a lot of people who've written about the Panopticon in recent years. But what Foucault said is that modern society is just like that. Modern society is panoptic. It involves a situation where we behave ourselves because we never know whether we're being watched or not. We're being surveyed all the time by the police, by uh, cameras on the streets, um, by forms and, and uh, examinations. And so we're caught in this sort of visual web that makes us behave ourselves. So that's, that's the panopticon and that's the bigger meaning that it has. And the question to ask, uh, uh, or the question that interests me is where does the panopticon come from? Now the typical answer to that story is that it was designed by an English philosopher, jurist, writer uh, of the late 18th century called Jeremy Bentham. And Bentham wrote a series of letters in answer to a competition for a prison design uh, in the 1780s and uh, the panopticon was the, was the thing that he came up with. And what I wouldn't have realised in my research is that um, actually, it wasn't Jeremy Bentham who came up with the idea of the Panopticon. It was his sub brother, Samuel Bentham. And Samuel Bentham did it in the context of working for a Russian prince at the end of the 18th century who was called Grigory Potemkin. The Panopticon is normally uh, attributed to Jeremy Bentham, but I think you can't understand the institution if you don't realise that, in fact, it was the product of his brother, Samuel Bentham. And Jeremy says in the Panopticon letters that he wrote to describe it for the prison competition, that it was an idea that he took from his brother. And if you look at the Russian context in which uh, the Panopticon was designed, it's apparent that originally it actually had a quite different purpose to the one that's normally associated with it, of being a prison of, and as of being this example of uh, surveillance that's in complete contrast to the old system of spectacular uh, violence and corporal punishment. So who is Samuel Bentham? Samuel Bentham went to Russia to try to get a position working for the government or the court and he was very successful in that. So he went uh, to Siberia, he studied mining and uh, natural resources for the government um, and he got to know um, Prince Grigory Potemkin who was the lover of uh, Empress Catherine II uh, and also a very powerful minister in Russia at the time. Now, uh, during this period, the Russians were fighting against the Poles and the Ottoman Turks and they were taking over the area uh, around the Crimea. And they wanted to recapture Crimea uh, and to establish a, a powerful fleet in the area. And the area north of uh, Crimea 
was uh, taken over by the Russians and the estate and was it was handed out to to Russian noblemen and particularly Potemkin. So Potemkin had a large estate in that region and he sent Samuel Bentham in the 1780s to go and develop the estate. And the interesting question is what was he uh, what was Bentham actually supposed to do there? And I would argue that he was supposed to create a kind of utopian um, production facility uh, that would represent all the things that Potemkin had planned for the region. So uh, he set up a model dairy and a model farm uh, and uh, manufactories and shipbuilding facilities and they were all supposed to work in a way that would be the future of Russian industry and enlightened uh, estate management. Now it's in that context that Bentham planned to build a panopticon and he didn't intend to use it as a prison, he wanted to use it as a manufactory and um, normally pe people have recognised that, that Samuel Bentham was interested in, in uh, that Samuel Bentham came up with this panopticon design originally but what they said is that he used it to um, discipline his quote ignorant Russian serfs and I think that's uh, a mistake because if you look in detail at the um, correspondence of Samuel um, and he wrote to Jeremy all the time Jeremy was back in England um, he actually says that the people who are a real problem for him are his English workers who he'd imported over from England to do work uh, and who were constantly causing chaos and uh, getting drunk and being insubordinate so I think the panopticon insofar as it was a disciplinary uh, institution was designed to keep an eye on the English people who, uh, who worked for Bentham. Now the other thing that one needs to know about this is that Pachomkin's estate was part of the itinerary for a tour of the region that Pachomkin arranged for Catherine the Great, for Empress Catherine II, to make in 1786 and 87. So in fact it turns out, and Bentham knew very well that Catherine was going to come and see the estate because he was asked to build a barge that she would use to go down the river uh, as part of the tour. Um, so in fact Bentham is designing this model enlightened estate specifically for the sovereign, for, for uh, the empress to come and see. So the panopticon is a spectacle, the panopticon is a theatre, it's a display of what a future Russian estate might look like and how power could be organised on it. And one of the things that I think is also interesting in that regard is that it, it reflects very much the way that Russian estates worked at the time. So in England, if you were a landed gentleman with a house and servants, it's very important that you keep your servants invisible. And English houses at the time were designed so you couldn't see the servants. On a Russian estate, however, the serfs were your wealth and you put them on display. Uh, and so they are visible and there are traditions of surf theatre and uh, one makes a spectacle of them. And so what the Panopticon did is it took the serfs on Pachomkin's estate and it put them into uh, a, a kind of theatre. Um, and in fact theatricality is really uh, interesting in Russia at this time. So there's a semiotician uh, called Yuri Lotman who says that Russia at this time was all about theatricality and theatre and spectacle and that playing the foreigner was a key part of what any Russian noble did because being westernised, being Europeanised was something that Russians were, had, had only started to do really in the 18th century and it became part of everyday life. So what, what Bentham is offering here is a, is a kind of uh, space in which you, you form a, uh, a microcosm of a Russian estate with your serfs visible from the central inspector's lodge and then inside the lodge uh, anyone can go in there and they're transformed from uh, a Russian, uh, traditional Russian nobleman into an enlightened Westerner. And uh, so I think that uh, one can read this institution, the Panopticon, through Lotman's uh, work and get a quite interesting and different view of it. And, uh, in fact, theatricality was quite important to the Panopticon, even in Jeremy Bentham's version. But when Jeremy de 
described the Panopticon in the letters that he sent back. He, came, he went to visit uh, Samuel in Russia, and that's where he wrote his Panopticon letters. And when he sent them back to, um, uh, to England, he didn't mention uh, a lot of this stuff, but theatricality was still quite important for him. Now, why does this matter? Um, well, first of all, it's a, I think it's a very interesting context that, that gives rise to this very influential uh, institution. Uh, and if we, if we follow Foucault uh, and other historians of the Panopticon, uh, it really uh, informed the design of many different kinds of institutions, not just prisons, but schools and hospitals and um, um, madhouses in the, in the 19th century. Um, but it also shows that there wasn't a very strong distinction between the sovereign power of spectacle and display uh, that uh, Foucault talks about and the disciplinary surveillance power that uh, he contrasts with that in his famous book, Discipline and Punish, which is where he talks about the, this culture of panopticism in modernity. So um, I think that uh, we have to rethink that uh, division and uh, understand that actually there's always a, an element of theatricality involved in this system of spectacle. Spe surveillance can be a form of play and uh, I think that's a key lesson of this story.